Okay guys, welcome back to the channel. Hopefully you've been enjoying some of the recent videos. I'm so backed up still. I'm trying to catch up. This has been my week to catch up on some stuff. And I inserted that peppy video that I did last week. I've got more from that visit to New Orleans with Doug uh, catching up with his new gear. But again, I am so backed up. I'm still haven't shown you guys what I teased in a YouTube short, the million dollar acapella speakers and that amazing system. But I'm working up to it. The last video I released was Rick Brown's house, who's the distributor that kind of put everybody together on this conglomeration of a no holds barred project, especially with the amps with David Burning. Uh, so I thought it was more important to first give you all that background first about Rick Brown, Steve McCormick, who was involved, and a lot of the gear that you're going to see in that million dollar acapella speaker room is the same gear that I featured in that prior video with Rick Brown. But today I wanted to follow up on that prior video, walking through Rick Brown's house. There's a couple of other excerpts I filmed that went into a little more detail of the parts quality and what all went into those David Burning amps, which as you heard, the prior iteration that was reviewed in Absolute Sound for the mass market, uh, the push-pull one was by Robert Harley claimed the best amp in the world. This one is a single-ended triode and went even above that in every respect. And you're gonna see in this video I show you just the meticulous level of attention they put into making just the tube socket alone. So I don't wanna spoil it, I'm gonna share with you that video to walk through a little bit. It's gonna be a short video just to get you caught up, a little more appreciation for the parts and everything that went into it. And then I'll get to that million dollar acapella speaker, which I think is one of one in the world. And so, and I'll also have music clips too. So stay tuned, sign up, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you back here soon. Tough Enjoy to what's coming. Teflon sockets made because I, I have to buy them in a hundred and in order to get a hundred, I need a partner because I can't leave a hundred. <laughs> so as you can see, it'll handle either a 211 or an 845 without without any adjustments on the part of the user, no rebiasing, just okay. you know, plug one in, either one, and it will work. So these are the, um, these pure Teflon socket bases, and you can see the, um, um, the, the spring finger socket arrangement, which does a good job of okay. ripping, you inside, you can see those little fingers, yeah. ripping the tube. So this is, uh, an assembly that I, I designed for the SET. This is our it's a Rogers uh, circuit board material um, and the um, tube socket soldered to it. And then what will happen is these will go to David Burning. This uh -huh. is an assembly, one of several. He'll just pop the top dress plate off of this and then solder the um, the lead wires out to it and this is a little a little platform for a small filament transformer that he builds hand builds okay. which will sit in here then um, and that is what you were seeing in there where you saw the, the single tube in that amplifier yeah so we're going to go take a look at something special at a customer's home with some of this similar gear yeah, he's got everything. Plus one-of-a-kind speakers almost in the U.S., I would think. One of yeah, few. Yeah, they are one of one. They are. The, uh, the designer was out here from Germany, and they, they've made other Spirons, but his pair is the only, uh, only new generation. Is that right? you going to see yeah, the latest generation. All right. Steve, awesome. In fact, Steve, why don't you tell them about it? You invented You did all this. your invention. You know, oh, okay. Yeah. The one invented, you know? So you can tell them about this the is part of the gravity-based system for the burning amplifiers. Um, I started originally with uh, brass, um, and we did a number of um, brass bases for the previous 845 monoblock um, system. Uh, but then I had been exploring Panzerholz more and more, and uh, what I found, can you see that all right? Yeah, that's good. I wanted to try to get you in too, but yeah, this is the Panzerholz. Yes. So. This is a densified wood product made in Germany by a company called Delignant. Mm -hmm. um, the, the history of this goes back, um, I don't know all the details, but my understanding was that this concept sort of came out of uh, Germany um, in around the World War II era where they were looking for a replacement for um, metal. Um, like the tank floors. Yeah. Um, and 
bulletproof properties and that sort of thing. And so it's like a super plywood. It is a wood-based product, but by the time they get done impregnating it with resin under pressure, uh, it has more sort of in common with aluminum and mm -hmm. other metals. Um, but it's a very dense um, product, very strong, mm -hmm. and uh, works very well for a variety of purposes in, in audio. And in this case, there's a, a sandwich that is formed with this and an aluminum plate. They go together uh, to create the gravity-based system for the, uh, the new SET amplifiers. Um, in fact, this is only one half of the, uh, wow. of the base. Th this gets doubled up. Oh, really? Um, so it's a total of uh, 16 millimeter thick, along with the eighth inch of, of aluminum, et cetera. So the, um, the sandwich characteristics are part of the uh, behavior and the superiority. Yeah, so there's a lot you don't even see under the hood, even oh, yeah. if you crack the hood, <laughs> right. yes, and that's we'll, high end and stuff. It's yeah. true, Jason. We'll show you when we get back the, okay. the, the choke chassis, the one that has the Ypsilon choke okay. yeah. the silver uh -huh. chokes with the Ypsilon. It's different again because it's using right? tank wood and carbon fiber. But we'll explain that when we get back. Awesome. So it's it's a different thing. So all the metal work is out here from Radisson, Delta, okay. Canada. And then we have another company that we get product from in Texas, Data Matique. But it's a global effort, you know, from to getting put the these together. Yeah. <laughs> from Demetrius, who makes here, the finest jokes. Here you go. Here's the boxes that the hey, jokes Ypsilon. come in. Uh -huh. from Ypsilon. So this yeah, is this a is, I think it's upside down, yeah. Custom made yeah. box just for the chokes, for the chokes to get alone. Here safely. That's amazing. Um but it uh screams high end even in the parts yeah, of I can even, I can I can lift this and turn it around now, but when the when choke it's in, is there, in there I would, silver not, be, in there, no, I would no. not be doing that. No. No. So That's really impressive. Similar. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll show you some of that other stuff, but Okay. We'll get ready to go now. Okay. I got to take a picture. This is amazing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you get a picture of this room. This is where the other system is right now. Yeah, we got to see the other, yeah, system. The other system. This is go gorgeous. This way. Go this way. Absolutely gorgeous. I just sleep outside every night. Well, he sometimes sleeps in here. Sometimes is that right? Should yeah. I close this? Yeah. Yeah, Jim, we just came over here to find something that his readership would... Uh, resonate with so we're going to look for some more you know maybe some not classical we put it that way okay so this is one of steve's earlier preamps huh uh this is is the oh this is a panther hole one this is more yeah, recent that's a panther hole yeah one. yeah that, this is this is another iteration of steve's uh handiwork there so this one is one step below the one you just saw this is the panzer holst edition of the vre and uh, the one that you saw in cool. the other room is the is the flagship Hi-Fi One version, and then it's his phono stage too, as you can see, which also has a power supply that's external. Both those power supplies are external, and then the uh, switch mode power supply for the Helix turntable is right here. Yeah, yeah this is amazing. Because this this too has the same suspension, so when we put this on there, it will float. It's just different. The one you saw in the other room was carbon fiber. And JR did the setup. This is the Grado Epoch. And, and I would bring your attention to the extreme amount of um, adjustment that's made for I don't yeah, know, the shim. Zenith. But yeah, yeah. And uh, here's a Wally Tools deal. This was actually the work that was done. And uh, it works perfectly. Works perfectly. Yeah, so without that shim, you would be... Well, you, you'd, have to, you'd have to do a lot of adjustment. A lot of adjustment. You'd have to do a lot of adjustment on the back of the arm, which the arm can accommodate. Um, the zenith part of it is really the biggest part from my point of view. Is there any uh, worry about the back of the cartridge hitting the record? There is, and, but we've got enough clearance, so it's fine. Okay. Yeah, but there is. There's always that. And the same thing would be true if you took the back, if you did that on it or did that. You know what I mean? You still right. have the same issue if you try to adjust it with the normal adjustments on the tone arm itself.
Oh, wow. The yeah. big M Labs amps. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, those are some big ass amps. <laughs> they have those big connected, like the boulder in the back. Yep. Exactly. Yep. Exactly. Do you know Rich Mace at Boulder? He used to work for Wide Eel, and I was working with him. Okay. Yeah. So, let's see if I can find you for you in terms of something very different. What you doing okay. in there, Jim? So, now you get to see what those grills look like on. Versus Paul. Oh, don't worry about it, Jim. We're okay without it. We're okay without it. Don't. I just want him to see it. Okay. Because we're 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 in here looking for just something that his readership would immediately resonate with. Yeah, right. Yeah, just take this out of my hand. Okay. Oh, I'm on the other side. Hang on. Come over there. Just a second. Okay. We'll take that. Oh, this is great. You can stop right there. <laughs> this is great. Okay. Yeah. yeah, let's do this. Oh, this is good. This will work. 